So should you use Substack? And this will be a question for different creators of different types, but it can be kind of confusing because some people already have an email list and they might be wondering how this new tool integrates with it or doesn't integrate at all. And so the long and short of it from my end is that it's very good for what I'd call deep thinking audiences, for lack of better words. And it also is good for music audiences too and media because it lets you embed audio either like from its native platform or it handles audio embeds really well from Spotify and YouTube. So it's pretty amazing. And, and I will talk a little bit about one newsletter that I enjoy just in a short little bit, but I think the big question that a lot of people have is like, does it meet my goals? And I think there's, from when I hear from people, there's a bit of a uh, split kind of approach that people have. And one of the approaches is that they might be looking to grow a paid audience. And so using Substack as a income stream. And from that, I kind of warn people like, that's not the best starting goal because you're just going to be like looking for how to grow your audience and then turn them into paid. And so for me, I don't really think that's the best starting point. I think it's okay to build that in, but to go in there with that expectation is tough because you're dealing with signing people up to an email list and that can be, that can take a long time but as word of mouth has to spread, right? But the platform does make it so that your publication could spread based on things like recommendations and its own network feed. So there's a lot of opportunity, but to grow a newsletter that you wouldn't have in tools like MailChimp, but on the other hand, don't expect that it will grow just like that and that you can earn the top living because that's there are lists that say how much certain people are making on Substack and there are some impressive numbers but those are people who they they might have been New York Times uh, journalists and stuff that broke off people got laid off from a publication and they started their own thing those are and then there's a lot of sports writers who are doing well for similar reasons right and then they they brought with them like big fans who are already like really into them and then they those fans are going to pay so that's part of that stream of people and then the other stream of people might just be more like my stream would be that i took to it because i didn't like sending mailchimp emails i found, find it really mechanical and like it, it increases a lot of nerves and you could just get really like tense before hitting send. And it, and even MailChimp used to have like a button, like you're about to hit send, you're about to, and Substack doesn't have that. It It's like very much like continue, save your post and it'll go out and then you just quickly tick off a schedule and send the post. I, I used to actually look for email platforms that were more minimalist for that reason as well, just like something to quickly like move an email through. And one of the old ones that I really enjoyed was called Tiny Letter. They definitely did that pretty well. And then they got bought by MailChimp. But Tiny Letter was probably the closest thing I can remember to what's going on here with Substack. One of the issues with Substack though, is that if with the paid subscriptions, they do take quite a cut. So that now that, like I remember that I can't give you the percent offhand, but it's really high. So that was one thing to be be wary of if you were part of the first camp, which was like looking for this as an income stream. And then, yeah, so the newsletter, so I operate two sub stacks. One is called the Sunday Bagel, 
which is like my core newsletter. And it that one is where you could expect to find my music in there if I have a new track come out. And then the other one is called The Most Creative, which is about doing your most creative work. And I wanted to separate them because I just felt like some people, there were people in my main audience, I just really couldn't imagine them taking in such granular information about the creative process. I could be wrong, and there is definitely a lot of overlap between the two newsletters, but the Sunday Bagel deals with a bit more overall well-being strategies in addition to the music is stuff that I so literally things from my notebooks that I they jot down during the week about not letting people bother you and just being kind of free from from pain so it's that's what those two newsletters are and then uh, the one that I recommend is named fog chaser and he his name is Matt and he's out in Oregon and I think Oregon or Washington State, I'm pretty sure he's near Portland. And he once a month sends a newsletter with a new piece of music that he's written for the newsletter. And it's his theme for the past, I guess, two years has been that every month it's in a new key. So if you take every key of music, so if you take every note and then you have the different major and minor, I think that's what he's doing. And the pieces are really nice. I I don't like listen right away, but I get back to them. I, I make a note, like I want to make sure I listen to that piece. And I listen to it actually a few times and I leave a comment and you can see he has a lot of people liking and commenting. So he has an active community plus paid subscribers. And I'm one of those people. And so that was like a really nice thing to to learn about which was like someone who's using Substack for music that is really, really good. Another one is called Flow State, which is a recommendation of music that works well for doing work, music that works well for doing work too, and, and getting into flow state. Now, not all of the recommendations I could pot I couldn't list I couldn't do work to all of them, but they all have a thread of being like interesting music and yeah, speaks to something that I have in common with the editors of that that substack. And so that's another one that I enjoy. But I also know like a friend of mine, he's into the sports writers and he pays for one that's a sports writer. So the last part of this video will be talking about if it's right for you let's say you already have a mailing list and what would you how would you do work this <laughs> you now have an option for a new platform it has social features in it like a news feed what would you do my suggestion is to start one and not maybe not aggressively push it. I, uh, I, I, I'm like at a bit of a loss for words, but here's what you could do. And I will give you someone that I found out there who has both and her, their name is Marley Grace. And they do something with a sub stack that's very popular and gets paid subscriptions and helps them part of their income. I I think they reported their income recently and it was very good. I don't, I'm, I'm just, I, I feel like I saw that. But then the person also has a lead magnet, which is a, a newsletter inside Flowdesk where they also can market their workshops to people through that. Now, what I don't know is, are they taking the people from Substack and adding them to the flow desk? I highly doubt they're doing that. That's possible. Or are they taking the people who come in through flow desk and adding them to the Substack? That would be more, make more sense to me because I opted into this, this freebie magnet. I had already been on their Substack, but I opted into the freebie. So you could then add them to the Substack and then periodically do backups of the email list if you're worried about the fact that you're like operating a list on a 
commercial platform that you're not paying for. So I guess I'll give one extra tidbit is that you might feel more comfortable when you pay for an email service provider. There's like a fair exchange that you are, you're well aware of and, you know, $30 a month to start with. And you get this email service that has no ads in the bottom with Substack. It's free for you, but the end result is that they ultimately want you to be a paid, they want you to have a paid newsletter. So they're going to be pushing for that and then all over the place. And, and they, it's kind of win-win, like they're going to help people sign up to your newsletter. They put different paywalls in front of content that you, like if someone looks at your newsletter and they're not signed up, like Substack can put up walls pretty quickly to get them to sign up. So it does a lot of things in your in service of your publication, but it's doing them so that that you can move them towards paid. At the moment, I don't really know of any real downsides to working with the company and any ethical issues. There was some stuff about censorship. I don't remember what it was in regards to, but that had spooked out people early on. I definitely back the company's values from what I can tell about them and, and what they publish. I'm I'm not, for someone like me who is pretty lax on those issues, and I do believe they're probably very good with privacy and not sharing email addresses, that kind of thing. They are quite upset with Twitter because, or the company X, because they have been blocking previews from them. And I they wrote some stuff about how they don't believe they don't agree with that sort of the way that that company is headed. So overall, I'm pretty happy with operating these. I don't get nervous about that uh, they're taking the email addresses, but I can also understand that at the moment it's not for everyone. And that's why I said the best thing is to sign up and give it a shot and see you know, if you like it. And and by the way, that was one of the things that Marley Grace had said about why they like Substack was that it made it easy to publish something. And so that is really key. Like email, it can be so triggering and difficult as it is to blast out an email that goes right into people's boxes. You want to work with things that make it easier. So if anything comes of the whole thing, I think another email company might appear one day that can kind of replicate the the thing that Substack has going for it, like a great editor, the embeds are seamless and all that, but then maybe not with the social network layer added on. Okay, I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.